So this video is going to explain concentration time um, relationships and we're going to use concentration and time in its equation to help us determine one or the other. Now parts of this equation include your A, your A naught, your K, and your T. And you may have actually seen this equation in another form which is A is equal to A naught E to the minus KT. And it just depends if you're using the natural log or ln version or the exponential version. Either way, you should attain the same values um, and the uh, variables represent the same things. But this natural log um, version is the one that's used more often and the one we'll be utilizing in this example. Now what A represents, of course, is the amount that currently um, exists at time t. A naught is the amount of the substance at time zero. K is the constant, the decay constant. And you may also have seen K is lambda in a nuclear reaction, for example. And T, of course, is the time it takes for this original amount to decay at the rate of K into this new amount. So how much remains if it's decomposing at this rate for this long if we started with this amount is essentially what this represents. So the question asks how long will it take for 70% of the initial amount of tungsten 188 to decay if it has a half-life of 121.2 days. So if 70% has already decayed from an original amount of 100%, that means 30% is remaining. So if I looked at ln of A equals ln of A naught minus KT, the original amount at time zero was actually 100%. So ln of 100. The amount that remains after this time t, which we don't know, we're solving for t, but after this original 100% has decayed over an unknown period of time, we have only 30% remaining. So you can actually use 30 and 100 because you're assuming that, of course, the total originally was 100%. 70% per the problem has decayed, so only 30% should be remaining. Now, the k, at what rate will it decay? We don't really know that just yet. And of course, what we're doing is solving for the time it takes for that to happen. So how do we attain k? Well, we're given the half-life here of 121.2 days. So on the side, you could actually calculate the k using a half-life equation. And there is a video to help you with half-life if you are interested in that. But this is the equation we use for half-life to find k. The half-life, we are told, is 121.2 days. That equals 0.693 over k. And to solve for k, we divide 0.693 by 121.2 days. So we attain 5.7 times 10 to the minus 3 inverse days. So that is our K. If it decays in a half-life of 121.2 days, that means the K value for it should be 5.7 times 10 to the minus 3. So let's go ahead and plug that in here for K. 5.7 times 10 to the minus 3 inverse days. All right. So if this equation looks familiar to you, it should because this is a linear equation. So it somewhat follows the y is equal to m x plus b slope equation where your k is your slope your, and it is a decay so things are declining hence you have a negative slope time is your x-axis the ln of a the amount that remains is your y-axis and your intercept here is your a naught so if that looks familiar that is the reason why we have ln of a to time a linear line that is negative and it is the slope of k. 
just a side note. So let's go ahead and solve for time. Let's figure out how long it takes for 70% of this tungsten to, to decay and to leave us with only 30%. Should it have a half-life of 121.2 days? All right, so ln of 30 is 3.4. Ln of 100 is 4.61 minus 5.7 times 10 to the negative 3 inverse days times time. So don't forget to take the ln of these two numbers. That's one common mistake um, people make is to just say this is 30 and this is 100, so 30 minus 100 is negative 70, and that's not the case. It is the ln value you could alternatively take the ln value of 0.3, which is 30 over 100, the ratio of these two, you could certainly take the ln of that. But if you're not familiar with logarithmic rules where if you're subtracting the ln of 30 from the ln of 100, which would essentially mean that you're taking the ln of the ratio of 30 to 100, which is 0.3, then just do yourself a favor, plug in the ln of 30 in the, into the calculator, get 3.4, take ln of 100, and get 4.61 and then just do simple math which is 3.4 minus 4.61 which gives you a negative 1.21 equals negative 5.7 times 10 to the negative third inverse days times time negative and negative we'll just cancel out to make positive and now we're going to divide 1.21 by 5.7 times 10 to the negative third inverse days and that will give us days rather than inverse days for time. So 1.21 divided by 5.7 times 10 to the negative 3 gives us 211.4 days. So how long did it take for tungsten to decay by 70%? Well, if it has a half-life of 121.2 days, which would mean it decays at a 5.7 times 10 to the minus third inverse days rate, it would take it 211.4 days.